Okay, good stuff. And with that, let's move on to our final news topic of the week. And again, I'm just going to hand this one over to John. The docket simply says shader glass. So tell us more. Yes. So there's a program called shader glass from a developer called Mousimus. Uh, <laughs> it's been around for a bit. The idea is essentially you run this and it sort of becomes like a window where you can apply different shaders, CRT shaders. You can change scaling, pixel size. But one of the coolest things about it has been it actually supports uh, black frame insertion, right? You can either you can just hit control shift G and it just full screens and anything within your, your monitor it now has this applied. You can also put it into a specific window for it. But either way, the idea is that you're applying the stuff on top of the game that you're running. And the effect is very cool. Uh, I've used this a lot for things like side scrolling games that are 60 hertz. Uh, if you have a monitor that doesn't have like black frame insertion or something built in, it's great for that. It's really, really good. But this week they released a new alpha build of this. It's alpha three specifically where he has implement implemented blur busters, CRT beam simulator into shader glass. So now you can essentially run this simulated CRT beam on top of your content. This is again, it is designed for 60 Hertz content primarily. Um, but the more, uh, the higher your refresh rate, the better the results, right? The number of subframes you can use for this. But in the result, it does take some tweaking. There's still some issues I have with it. But when it's working well, it is honestly staggering to see this kind of motion clarity just work on a monitor like this. Uh, mm. When it, you know, it really does. And not only that, your eyes, you, you do detect like the actual little bit of like a scan line flicker. Where you actually can feel like the the drawing from the top corner to the bottom in a way it's very interesting to see uh, unfortunately the problem with it right now is that it is expensive not that expensive but it does have a performance uh sort of impact right there is a bit of a bottleneck there so if you're running simpler games you know, you're running like say MAME, you're running like 2D games, you know, older 3D games, it's no problem. But I was trying this with uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta, uh, which is obviously a brand new, very heavy game. I'm able to lock that game to 60, but just barely <laughs> on my <laughs> system. And dropping shader glass on top with the CRT simulator kind of pushes it over the edge. And so what you end up with is this sort of like desynchronization where it'll either flicker, flash. You can see the motion like losing this fluidity where it kind of looks stuttery at times. Uh, so like you get these pockets where it looks perfect, but then you see it kind of break. So unfortunately, it's not it's not quite the panacea I was hoping for for games like that. But it did get me thinking more about this concept and how much I would love to see to, uh, vendors implement this at a driver level. Clearly, it can be done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because the problem is a lot of pe most PC gaming monitors these days, especially with the shift towards high refresh rate as a focus, they've eliminated this. Either strobing, black frame insertion, all those features are increasingly uncommon on PC gaming monitors. Uh, obviously, NVIDIA does have the Pulsar stuff, which seeks to solve this, but that's, again, just LCDs and just specific monitors. You need the hardware. I think a driver-level implementation of what Shader Glass is doing that can more easily work with the GPU uh, and has a, perhaps a more like reasonable performance cost or can like work better with the games in a way, if you will, would mm -hmm. be so cool to see. Um, and it would solve a lot of problems with motion clarity for so many different titles. Uh, and it's, it's, it's super cool. I was doing it at 300 Hertz on this monitor here. I also tried it on uh, a 480 Hertz monitor and yeah, when you're at 480 Hertz and it's working correctly, it may as well just be, it's, it's like basically perfect. It's mm -hmm. honestly insane how clear it is. So I wanted to highlight this because this is a problem near and dear to my heart. I think when people complain about 60 FPS, and don't get me wrong, I love my frame rates over 60. I think it's very important and beneficial for PC games. But the problem with 60 is sample and hold. 
Sample and hold displays do a terrible job with 60 frames per second. They blur it. They smear it. The motion clarity is just not there. It's very ugly, I think. And I've always hated the way it looks. Uh, high refresh rates basically help mitigate this to some extent, which is why we've seen a rise in that over recent years. But 60 hertz can look amazing on a pulse type display. That's why 60 hertz looks great on a CRT and why I've been harping on it. But techniques like this allow us to reach that clarity on otherwise sample and hold displays. So mm -hmm. yeah. come on, NVIDIA, AMD. Like, like this is such a feature. Like if like, let's say like I would go to whichever uh, board manufacturer or whichever chip manufacturer did this first, I would switch to their GPU in a heartbeat. That's what right. I'm saying. Right. I think it's so important. Motion clarity is like just top. It's it's what I strive. It's what I want from a display. And it's something that so many companies have struggled to deliver. And I never um, understood why it's just not given the importance it deserves. I guess NVIDIA has at least thought about it a bit more lately since they're developing this Pulsar stuff. But again, it's freaking LCD only. <laughs> and I... And I you all know where I think LCDs belong. Yeah, I saw just, one in, the, in Cologne. I'm just sort of uh, <laughs> picturing you entering like a, a hardware store with a gigantic sledgehammer, just finally <laughs> letting out all of your fury. You years were you <laughs> pent up yeah. LCD fury. <laughs> no, it's like that that one scene and maybe way, Mr. Like, Beast you, could you, facilitate right. this particular yeah. spectacle. <laughs> Uh, John, oh, I don't know. But, I don't know what you think, though, Alex. I mean, oh, you wow. you've grown you since embracing the CRT lifestyle. I think you've yeah. also kind of come to find what I'm saying is not so crazy after all. No, it's not crazy at all. It's in <laughs> fact really important. And I think uh, John's idea of putting it on the driver level is a really good one um, from a uh, from an integration standpoint. Nvidia is already manipulating the image post with a lot of stuff. Yep, they're using you know. Oh. Of RTX, course, they HDR, just etc. they could know, stick right? it into the you know the Alt Z menu, whatever they call it, in the yeah. Nvidia drivers, where you bring up like the list of effects, the like overlay, the, the overlay, overlay RTX, <laughs> RTX HDR, all that RTX stuff. Overlay. Implement it there, guys. Come on, at the yeah, very least. Great. I also think there's a, an argument, depending upon how expensive the monitor is, to be a monitor feature, um, which would be. be. I mean, it would take a, it would take out the. The potential latency, GPU latency issue, dude. But issue. monitor but manufacturers having a shader don't running. freaking care, dude. I spent two grand on this monitor, and it's not even there. And most, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and if you search around, like any of these high end gaming monitors, like once they went to high refresh rate, they just dropped this feature like a hot, like a hot rock. Yeah. BFI it was sucks. definitely less to, <laughs> to go. At least you I can also, still get it on TVs. Yeah, that that's the true part. Um, the one thing. I was going to also say like uh, another great reason for this to come into existence and be more ubiquitous is because the fact that CRTs are going to be dying and there's no replacement technology for them in the medium term. And it would be great if you could get extremely close to a CRT's properties, at least maybe one half of those properties, uh, just by having an OLED display, uh, a generic OLED display. And then... It would make that retro market so much more enjoyable too, because a lot of people, uh, the co the cost too. Like you can find, like I'm very lucky that I found mine from people locally or semi locally that were just like these are old monitors. We got to get rid of them, right? Um, exactly. But a lot of them are like this is a boutique retro dream uh, monitor from 2005. Uh, it costs 350 euros or like the FW 900 that John has, this costs 16,000 euros. So like, the, it's you not know, quite that bad, you've, I've seen the prices. They, they it's are not, ridiculous. It's not 16,000 euros. It's at least two these days, two, two to four is what they often go for, which is, that is ridiculous, which sucks because <laughs> they're old monitors, right? They rule, but like they're very old at this point and like spending that much money on something that can break at any time. Not it can good. break at any time. Yeah, I'm it's, still it's, in tears a, over my XM29. That NEC XM29 it was so beautiful, and it lasted for two weeks. It pains <laughs> me to even think about it. That it's, it's still being worked on. But man, like CRTs, uh, they, I love them, but they bring heartbreak. Man, they bring heartbreak. What was the issue in it, though, John? Just really quick. Uh, something, something just failed on the deflection board. 
And because it's such a, we're trying to figure out which component it is and it's getting narrowed down, but actually like if you actually see, it's got like 10 circuit boards in there. It's so jammed, yeah. so difficult to work on. Like it's an absolute nightmare compared to like a consumer style CRT uh, that the people helping me out, like we're looking at that. It just like, Jesus, like there's so yeah. many freaking boards in here. Like even just getting your hand in there to get the things out, like it's insane. Yeah. So, well, so it goes. <laughs> Well, I, I hear what you're saying. Facebook Marketplace, which is my go-to place for bargains, you know, CRTs now are just being ruthlessly overpriced. You know, even the crappy ones. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah, it's all our fault. I feel like we, yeah. we contributed a little bit to this. <laughs> but hey, Linus did it too. Fair point. Many <laughs> That's used in ours. Mm, Cumulative exactly. damage of an impact there. Even though we were there first, and I was, I've been beating this drum for years, but still... We still need to do like a, a a CRT video, sort of definitive CRT video, but we mm. digress.